New AI out of Stanford and Harvard can read chest x-ray images as well as a radiologist. If you follow medical AI, you might be wondering what's the big deal. AI has been able to do that for years. The big advancement here is all about how this new AI called Qi X0 was trained. It can learn in ways that even a human can't. Let's unpack this a little. I'm Matei and I make videos about AI. The previous systems use annotated extra images for their training dataset. This annotation is done by a human radiologist, so it's very labor intensive and therefore expensive. It also means that AI systems trained in this way can only detect diseases annotated in the training dataset. In normal clinical practice, when a radiologist reads an x-ray, they don't annotate what they see on the x-ray images. They just look at the images and write what they see in the radiology report. So while annotated x-rays are hard to come by, pairs of x-ray images with corresponding radiology reports are generated every single day all around the world. GX0 was trained on these pairs of X-ray images and corresponding radiology reports. They used 377,000 images with corresponding 228,000 reports. Sometimes they take multiple images per patient. This is called self-supervised learning, which just means that it is learning from unlabeled data. It is able to accurately identify pathologies that were not explicitly annotated in the training dataset. The clinical reports provide the supervision. Let's have a quick look on how this works. The architecture described in figure one. In part A, it talks about how this neural net was trained. In part B, it describes on how it works in classifying uh, unknown images. So during training, they fed the x-ray images. So that's a chest x-ray. And then here are the text inputs, which is the radiology report. This particular image has opacity in the lower right of the lung. This is also described in the text here. So there's an opacity right lower lung. Then the images are fed into visual transformer and the text is fed into text transformer. Transformers are pretty complicated. I'm still trying to get a handle of them. There is a really good explanation on Wikipedia. Transformers have been revolutionary in natural language processing and more and more they're also used in vision processing. The key concepts behind transformers are positional encoding and attention. Attention helps the neural net to understand the context of the word or the parts of the image with respect to the other words around it or the other parts of the image. And then the outputs from the vision transformer and the text transformer are used in contrastive learning which is the self-supervised learning part of this neural net. After the neural net is trained, it's time to classify unknown images. So what it does is takes a known pathology. So here's a positive prompt for the pathology. So let's say, does the patient have pneumonia or negative prompt, which is uh, no pneumonia. This is fed into the text transformer. On the other side, here are the images that uh, need to be classified. Those are fed into the visual transformer. And then these two are contrasted based on probabilities. So in this case, the negative pathology has a 0.7 probability and the positive pathology, so there is something is 0.3. So it's more likely there is uh, no issue with this uh, x-ray scan. This self-supervised method is as capable of identifying certain pathologies as well as an expert radiologist and previous fully supervised methods. One thing that stood out to me in the methods was the size of the images they used for the training. They resized all the x-ray images to 224 times 224 pixels. That's 0 0.05 megapixels. Just for reference, I shoot this video in 4K, which is about eight megapixels. Let's talk about some limitations of this work. The model does not need annotated data, but the radiology reports need to be of high quality. Particular problem might be if certain pathology can be referred in multiple names. Currently, this work is limited to image data. A lot of medical data are not just images. The hope is that this method can now be applied to other imaging techniques, such as CT scans and MRIs. Another cool thing would be to train this type of model using whole patient history and outcome. Maybe it will be able to pick up some red flags that even physicians can see right now. So will this new technology replace radiologists? Medical industry insiders correctly argue that radiologists do a lot more than just read the images. And I agree with that. I believe we'll have radiologists around for a long time, but I do think that the number of radiologists will go down. While radiologists do a lot more than just read images, Reading images is a big part of their job, and these AI tools will make this job easier and faster. So I predict that if now your hospital needs 10 radiologists, in a decade or so, they might be able to handle the workload with five thanks to the advancement in AI. One thing that caught my eye about this paper are the authors. The first three authors contribute equally to this work, 
and were all undergrads at Stanford. The last three authors are all professors. Curtis Langlold is a radiologist at Stanford, so his uh, contribution is most likely just providing the radiology data. Andrew Eng is a former PI of Pranav Rajpunkar, which means that the undergrads did most of the work in this paper, which is quite impressive since it was published in such a prestigious journal. If you want to help out this channel, please consider subscribing and liking the video, and you can also share on Twitter. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.